our company, Christy Kimbrell, with the Exceptional Home Team. Uh, we are starting a seller workshop series that's going to be, you know, keeping you informed of what's happening in the market right now. Um, there's a lot of changes that are happening with COVID and 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 riots and unrest and politics and things. And you know, real estate always plays kind of a, a, a barometric level response system to what's happening in our economy. And so um, we are somewhat the barometer of, of how things are going. And yet right now that's a little off kilter because the market is extremely strong considering all the questionable things that are happening around us. So we're excited to share that. Um, had you asked me about eight weeks ago where I thought things would be, I guess I don't think I would have thought we would have kind of rubber band bounce back so quickly as we have so without further ado I'll get into our first slide and tell you a little bit about who we are um, we're the exceptional home team um, I have been the founder of this team for the last um, 17 years originally started with my business partner George Joe Cashmore, and has now grown and expanded into multiple states. Um, we really are passionate about partnering with people to build wealth, um, making sure that our number one commitment and priority is to leave a greater impact than the, the number of homes sold. And so this is just part of what we do to help connect um, the community to what's happening in the real estate market. So thanks for tuning in. Um, our goal tonight is to talk about the real estate market, um, what's happening today. Uh, we'll talk about some current design trends. Those are always really fun for people. I know a lot of my clients have questions and that's where people start. Uh, you're always looking to improve your property, so I wanna help you do that. And then maximize the value of those improvements so that if and when you decide it's time to sell, you've um, intelligently placed some creative design things that can give you a better return on investment. And then we'll just answer any questions you have. So feel free to use the tools um, there's a Q&A button. I think you can raise your hand, some of those things. So I'll try to do a good job at watching for those. And if I don't answer your question kind of fluidly throughout the conversation when you post it, I will get to them all at the end. So what's happening in today's real estate market? Um, right now, the National Historic Showing Stats. Uh, everybody's wondering what's happening with showing. So as you can see here, um, I do have a cool pointer. Let's see if it works. See that guy? He's kind of fun. So this is May of 2018. If we compare the same seasonality year over year. So then we have May of 2019, which you know, to me, that's relatively the same. Of course, we have April of 2020 which took uh, a, a big hit due to COVID and the quarantine across the country. And then we go to May of 2020, where we have now exceeded the past two years of results. And that really has to do with a couple of factors. Um, for us, we're believe of, of some pent up demand that wasn't hit here. So all those people that would have been out showing here, we've got double the demand um, on the May month rather than uh, what we would have seen in March and April, as well as low interest rates. Um, interest rates, I'm not a mortgage person, but we do watch them closely and discuss them with our clients. They're, they're hovering in the low threes right now um, for a 30 year fixed rate conventional mortgage. Of course, that has to do with good credit and we can help you figure that out. Um, if you have some questions, let us know at the end and we can partner you with a great lender. But those are some of the things that are playing into this um, rapid rebound effect that we're experiencing and having a high volume of showings. When we go into the May closed um, statistics, we have the past uh, four years here for you. So 2017, 18, 19, and 20. And you can see that we are um, kind of hitting an all-time low. However, in all fairness, there wasn't a lot of contracts being written at the end of March and the, throughout April. And so this is to be expected. I think we're gonna see this rebound in June and kind of come closer to what we may normally anticipate for um, a kind of catching up. Um, as long as inventory holds, um, and right now with inventory being down, our closings are naturally going to be down. And so we've got the closed sales have decreased by 22.4% from 2019, if you want that in percentage. So sales cut are compared down from last year, but not for lack of trying. Uh, buyers are out there, and so we are seeing a lot of showing activity, as you saw on the slide before. Okay, median sale price. So our sales price is up 3.5%. Uh, that is due to limited supply, right? So we, we haven't talked about our supply, but right now I've got to move something out of the way so I can see this stuff. Um, we've got uh, average sale price of 294,000. So that is, um, 
you know, that's up from last year. Obviously, you can see that and read it on the slide, but it's good to see. And I think, again, it comes from um, just having low inventory. Uh, if you've heard some stories about people outbidding, things selling quickly in this median sale price, that's incredibly true. Um, I, I do discuss in some of my marketing or consultations like micro markets, the micro market of where you're at. So meaning how many people like your neighborhood market or your price range in your city or school district, sometimes we can have have even less inventory and in some cases more so for instance you know on Lake Minnetonka right now it's a fairly balanced market we have about four and a half months of inventory you know but in these um, in these two hundred ninety four thousand dollar more entry-level numbers sad to say that is an entry-level price now um, we're seeing you know two months at best of inventory in some of the most demand cities so it's always good to understand your micro market um, but this is our twin cities as a whole okay so Oops. All right. So buyers have been quick to return to the housing market. They've been a little quicker than our sellers have. Um, my professional opinion is that our sellers pulled their houses off the market, made a lot of changes and adjustments, and they just haven't had a lot of time to get it back on the market. Um, they lived in their houses a little rough. They started some DIY projects. They tore some things apart. They hired some things done or even decided to stay. So a lot of our markets kind of shifted and we don't have as much inventory as we might like. So the available homes for sale is down considerably. It's down 20%. And our buyers and our showing activity, as you saw in a few slides before, is back. And so that's creating a lot of pressure and driving prices up. Um, that's great for sellers, not so great for buyers. On average, our buyers are writing three to five offers before they actually end up with the property of their choice. And again, that has to do with certain micro markets. So always, you know, check with us specifically about your plan. But that's what you could expect of the conversation to sound like if you were to enter the market as a buyer. Um, so May month supply of inventory, I was just touching on that, right? If you look at what's happened over the last four years, we've had um, 2.5, 2.3, rebounding up. We've been hovering in the twos. Um, anything that we've got, or anytime that we've got less than four months supply of inventory, it's considered a seller's market, meaning sellers are going to benefit from putting their house for sale. Now, that also means that you might have a tougher time purchasing, and you know, you're always transitioning in the in a market right so it's gonna if it's gonna benefit a seller it's gonna not so much benefit the buyer and vice versa so unless you're exiting the market that's the only time to make sure that you're playing your cards right and leaving when or entering whenever it's in your favor um, right now with interest rates being low as they are buyers are seeing that benefit and they don't really care that they um, are having to write five offers because uh, the adverse effects of when interest rates start to climb, inventory will start to rise and they'll have more choices and they won't be in such competition. However, their interest rate will be higher, which the interest rates play a larger, um, they have a larger impact on the cost of the home, usually than the sale price does. So it's important for you to consider and get into a deep, you know, somewhat financial conversation with one of us in order to, to determine if it's the right time for you to buy and sell so you can understand all the pieces. So our um, inventory is down 20%, like we saw on the last slide, that leaves on average two months of inventory available. And again, every market is a little bit different, those little micro market pockets of the Twin Cities. So just let us know and we can kind of send you a specifics on what your market's doing. Okay, we are flying through this and that's how I like it. So we, <laughs> a market analysis. So what does this mean for me? Right, so um, when supply is low, oops, we'll go back. Supply is low and demand is high. We just covered that. That means that it's a seller's market, right? So over 8% of the country is participating in the forbearance plan, right? What does that mean? That means 8% of all mortgages are currently not being paid. What does that mean? Well, they are uh, COVID, the for COVID forbearance plan has allowed um, and granted mortgage companies to offer to mortgage holders, right, the current sellers, maybe you if you have a mortgage, to not pay their payment right now. 
with no penalties, no, no interest charges, and no hit to their credit. So they can essentially decide just not to make their payments if they go on and sign up for this program. That was for the for three months. That was going to start back up July 1. It's now been extended for three months. So now some of the um, homeowners, like the 8% that put in a forbearance, just got it extended another three months. Well, that's great for them. Not so great considering their financial situation. So most of them, um, I'm hoping, are doing it just because maybe they lost their job or they want to um, just kind of buffer and save some money in case they have an issue in the future. But right now we wanna make sure that we've got, um, that we keep an eye on that so that we understand what's happening with mortgages because if too many of those people really legitimately can't afford to make their payment, once the payments turn back on, and they find that they are now six payments behind, they can tack it onto the end of the loan, which means the day that the loan is due, they will just owe more money than a zero balance. They'll still have those pending payments. Uh, it also means that whenever they sell their property, they'll have that lump sum due. So again, there's no interest or penalties, but seeing that number so high, it's a little concerning to the possible shifts in our market that we might see in the next 12 to 18 months. Shifts in our market meaning are we gonna to start to see foreclosures come back, short sales? Um, foreclosures, maybe. Short sales, I would hope not. Um, that The lending laws have been so strict, most homeowners are in a equity position, meaning they can afford to sell. So our goal with our team is gonna to be to create some classes like this to help educate people that are maybe having a little bit of trouble with their mortgages, understand how to navigate and sell before they're really in a hard spot so they can get that cash out and use it to their advantage. I see I've got some questions here. So let me look at those. I'm having trouble seeing them. Um, clicking on them, not seeing them. Where would they be? I see your questions and Q&A. I want to get to them. I could see them before. Because um, I know they're coming from the slide. Hold on, shoot. All right, my superpower uh, assistant Kelly's on here. Maybe she can uh, help see them, maybe not. All right, Kelly, will you let me know if you can actually get in and see them? All right, so I'll keep going and I will get them answered. We will get them seen. Right now, I can't figure out for the life of me why they're not showing up like they were when we test ran this earlier. So thanks for your patience. Okay, although we don't have a crystal ball, this pressure is unlikely to stay. So it's a great time to sell and capitalize on the pent up demand um, and low interest rates. Um, we don't usually see this kind of activity in an election year, which is a whole different conversation. I think there's been so much that's happened. It's kind of overshadowed some of the election effect that we tend to see, which is a bit of a softening of the market. Um, we were due for a softening of the market regardless. And so um, we're going to probably see that happen, which means we could see prices soften. Okay, so then when we go on to the next slide, um, determining the value. So your home, what's your home not worth? Uh, it's not worth what you paid necessarily, right? Hopefully it's worth more. Uh, it doesn't really matter, unfortunately, what you need out of it uh, or what you want out of it um, or what your neighbor's house sold for, depending on how similar it is to yours. So the factors that we consider that are truly um, help impact the value of your home is gonna be what a buyer, of course, is willing to pay. The buyers determine the market. You know, unless you're the seller or I'm the buyer, we are not the ones that are going to decide it. So we look at today's market, the competition, your financing, the economy, um, the buyer's perception of location, uh, your home, the home's condition. Like all of uh, all of these are things that are going to determine the home, your home's value, and that's part of what you need to consider in being realistic in your approach to getting up your property sold. So color trends, we're gonna to switch to the fun stuff. If that wasn't fun for you, I don't know what is, but this should be. So we've got color trends. We've got um, deep blues, earthy muted greens, complex greens, soft pinks, et cetera. If you like our page, The Exceptional Home Team, you'll see some uh, trending tips on what colors are, um, what colors are in, what colors are out, what you should do. If you want any information on the best ways or the best colors that people are painting their property, let me know. We can always send those out. 
Um, kitchen trends, so we've got statement ranges. Um, people are spending a lot of money at uh, making that range the focal point, seeing some, um, oops, seeing some pretty um, impressive range hoods here. Same thing with having some fun with them here. Um, details in the backsplashes, so stand out black backsplashes and even putting granite or marble behind um, has been fun trend. Um, everything is pretty light and bright, um, airy. You're starting to see some color come back, which is great. And gold is making a comeback. Uh, not your shiny brass, but this muted gold color that you see here. So that is definitely a trend. And also see they paired that still with the stainless steel appliance. So you can do that when it comes to your appliances. I don't see gold appliances making a comeback anytime soon. Living room trends. So your natural materials and textures, um, again, that open airy feel. Um, black windows are a thing right now. Um, typically colored windows are a custom feature where when you've got custom windows, they're always a color. The white ones are kind of the cheaper, more entry level window. Um, I've actually seen some people painting their windows black, which has been a way to kind of give it an updated, more modern flair. Um, but still light, bright, airy with a few pops of color and some earthy colors like greeneries and things like that have all, always been great. Um, so we've got bedroom trends, uh, high quality textiles, a lot of texture in the, in the, in the textiles. So um, if you're going to put your house on the market, making sure you've got one of those showroom beds as best as you can is a great idea. Um, we've also got um, some cool things happening in the bathroom. Um, bathrooms are one of my favorite things to update. They don't cost a lot of money. We'll talk about um, where to spend your money soon here in an upcoming slide. And by the way, we're almost done, so hang in there with me. Um, but we've got creative tile choices. This floor that you see on the tile here, this isn't common in Minnesota, but like this pattern is here or something that's a lot more bold is something you're going to see um, come out in your bathroom remodels or if we had the parade of homes this year, I think they continued it again, but um, you're going to see some of that happen. Framed mirrors is great. If you've got that plate glass mirror still on your wall, a really easy update is to put a frame mirror up and have a little fun with your lighting. That'll really change the feel. Um, so how to maximize your home's value. We're going to run through a few um, updates that you can do that whether you're moving or not are a lot of fun and can lead to a good return on investment. So your larger projects and where you should always spend the money is kitchens and bathrooms. I get asked all the time if I should finish my basement to sell my home. I rarely say yes to that. So please don't spend 30 or 40 or $50,000 in the basement. It's really not going to add that much. Sometimes it's a direct you know, pass through where I can increase the property by 30, 40 or 50,000, but I can't usually do an extra hundred, right? It's not the place to really get the biggest bang for your buck. And some people really do like an unfinished space where they can, you know, help finish it themselves, let their kids run around and make chaos, um, do their workouts, have extra storage. So there's a lot of ways that we can sell that as a benefit when we have your house listed. Um, so change out something simple like the countertops or your um, door handles. You don't have to do a whole remodel in order to get a big um, return on these projects. So again, bathrooms I mentioned, those are great. Simply replacing the door, right? Putting in a frameless shower door and some new, if you've got neutral tile and you swap out your shiny brass or your shiny chrome for a couple new um, faucets and things like that, um, all of a sudden the bathroom can take on a whole new effect. You can also just kind of, you can paint your vanity like a gray color if we've got an old oak vanity, painting these a color like a, 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 a gray or maybe even a navy is a great idea. You can see they added shiplap to the wall here. This is really popular. And again, we've got the frame mirrors coming in. Um, butcher block counters, that's not exactly a trend. You can still do it. You can see that the difference of a butcher block here versus granite. You can have some fun. And these freestanding tubs have been um, quite the rage for the last five years or so. A lot of people are pulling any sort of built-in tub out and either putting in a freestanding or getting rid of it completely. So if you're in the master bath, uh, you do, definitely do not need to have a soaking tub. Okay, so then we've got um, lighting. Lighting's lots of fun. We've got a lot of creativity when it comes to lighting right now. So these are funky and cool. Um, we've got some of those Edison light bulbs happening. Um, and it's, it's been just a, 
it, it's been a fun accent piece for a lot of people when they're doing it. So, um, but overall cleanliness is important when you're, um, and that's really cheap to do, but it, like every inch of your house should be clean before you put it on the market. It's not the way we usually clean it. So we do have services that come in and help. Um, so it's just something to consider. Okay, so then we've got um, exterior. Your landscaping, you guys, uh, landscaping can be a bear, especially with the limited amount of seasonality we have, but fresh mulch, no weeds. If you're gonna be there to, to water them, put some plants in. Otherwise, if you're not, don't put them in, they just die. Um, you don't need a lot of stuff. Oops, you don't need a lot of stuff by the front foyer. Um, you can keep it just kind of clean and fresh. Creating some, um, you know, open spaces in your backyard can be great where you've got some like a sitting space or um, you're creating a, like a fire pit space like just in the in the yard. So creating some usability to areas that aren't that you don't even use can be a great um, selling feature and make it feel like home for people. Um, and then we've got um, staging with my things. So all of our, um, our partnership with our company comes with a staging consultation. So we use your things in order to um, maximize the way your home shows to a buyer. Um, we have a consultant that comes through, gives you a honeydew list of things to either move, put in storage, pack away, use in a different way, or even reposition in the room to optimize the way this looks. Right, you've got bookcases here. Rarely does anyone's bookcase actually look like that. It just does by the time we go to sell. So be prepared for a little bit of that extra work goes a long way in helping your home look beautiful when it comes to um, presenting it to buyers. So, um, and then it comes to making sure that we've got amazing photography. Um, the photography matters. So here's some before and afters of the same kitchen shot that we did. Um, so we've got a kitchen shot here. Then we redid it here. Um, we also have before shot here, and then obviously the after. So with 95% of your buyers starting their home search online, uh, having an expert photographer to highlight your home is essential. Um, one of our um, greatest features and assets is our photographer. We think they make things look amazing, and yet not too amazing that we don't get the right showings through, right? We want to accurately portray the property, but to invite them in with the photo versus putting them off. And hopefully you can see the difference in the photos here. So we've got definitely 3D tours, drone photography, all sorts of ways in this virtual world that we make your home accessible so that buyers can get a chance to view it and feel excited and set up a showing. Okay, um, so then, I mean, we're really wrapping up. Our promise to you is our goal is that you have such an amazing customer experience with us that you feel compelled to refer us. And this is one way that we're getting a little bit closer to our clients to help um, answer some of their questions up front and make sure that we can, um, you know, provide the solutions they need in order to um, make it happen. So I'm gonna hit stop share here. So hopefully I can find these questions. Um, yeah, there they are. So can you zoom out? I can't see. Okay, well, that's too late. Okay, I only see the top picture section. All right, well, that's too bad. All right, so hopefully you guys were able to see everything. I wish I could have find that um, sooner, but uh, hopefully this is working well for you. Um, we are going to do a buyer one too. Um, I do want to take some time to answer some questions and thank you guys for coming. I'm going to put a couple links in the comment section. If you want to do anything to help support us or um, show your appreciation for the time we spent here tonight together, there's a couple links for you to do a Google review or a Facebook review to our pages. Make sure to go on and like and follow so you can keep in touch with some of this information. Um, I'm more than happy to answer um, any of your questions that you might have. Um, I know we've got some people that are on for their first time. If you have questions about, well, looks like, okay, so I've got a question here. So when is the best time to sell? Um, right now, I guess I would say the best time to sell, and I'm, I'm glad you asked, is you know probably in the next few weeks here, um, and definitely still this year. Um, we have a good window of time uh, in Minnesota to list properties and take advantage of the pent-up demand that we have. 
probably through October. Um, and then of course, then again, we start again right away in January. So a lot of people think about the spring market. A couple of my favorite times to list is like January 15th. Um, and then right now, any time between now and October, because we do want to take advantage of um, the market. Um, let's see what other questions. Um, what do we do with COVID um, and keeping people safe? So what we've been able to do is um, offer virtual showings. Um, we can have just the agent come through. Um, and we also are doing actual video tours of the property, which then that's just the photographer coming in. We can have video tours be seen and viewed first before we allow a showing to come through. So what that means is they would request a showing, we send them the link to the video. Once they have proven it, that they viewed the video and still wanna see the home, then we end up with the confirmation for them to tour it. Um, we try to limit it, we ask that you keep all the lights on, even maybe the door unlocked if you're that, if you don't even want them touching the lockbox. Um, we will supply you with some hand sanitizer if you wish, or if you don't have enough, so that people are hand sanitizing and then they're in and out in usually about 15 or 20 minutes. And so that's been working really well. We've been listing properties throughout the quarantine and then of course beyond. We put several properties on without me ever going in the property and without any formal showings other than maybe the handful of people that made it past kind of our gauntlet in order to then write an offer. So our sellers liked it a lot. They didn't have to be displaced as much and then that kept everybody as healthy as possible. And we actually didn't have any instances of a client getting sick at all. So we felt pretty good about our plan um, and the buyers have been pretty receptive to it. So it hasn't really caused um, any decline in showing activity other than keeping out the looky loos, which they really aren't out right now. That's the nice part is most of the buyers that are looking kind of need a home. And so um, that's been kind of what we're seeing there. So um, what other questions? Let's see. Um, feel free to put them in the chat box. Looks like I've got one more. Um, what do we do if we don't have a place to sell or to buy? Um, there are four different steps. And I think that in order to answer that question properly, we would want to come out and go through the four steps model. Um, we will be doing like a, a, a workshop on that so you understand how to buy and sell at the same time. That'll probably be in three or four weeks from now. So you can watch for that. Otherwise, we're happy to come out and look at your property and talk about your four options when it comes to, you know, how do I make sure I can buy and then sell and not have double payments, et cetera. So I would definitely recommend talking to us more directly. So um, I know we set this up for an hour. I tend to talk really fast, especially when there's nobody interacting and I'm just essentially talking to a screen and, and presenting. So um, I encourage you to reach out to me. Um, I'll be on here for a few minutes after as you guys log off, if anybody has some specific questions. Um, I think I can maybe see people. I'm not really sure. Let's see. No, in this webinar mode, I can't. But feel free to send me a chat in the chat box. Um, and Christy, yes. if you click on participants and then yeah. attendees, you can allow them to talk if oh, anyone fun. wants to talk. Okay, so then you can raise your hand. How about that? Because I think you guys have a raise your hand button. So if you want to talk, go ahead and do that. And then we can make sure that we, yeah. Hi, Linda. You're muted. So I'm gonna unmute you. Okay. There you can go. Can you hear me? I can, yeah, go ahead. Okay, my question that I asked that you didn't respond to is, what about what's going on in the city and defunding, if you live in Minneapolis and wanna sell your house in Minneapolis with the defunding of the police, how is that affecting the real estate market how will it affect it in a few months do you perceive? Because the crime is going up and I don't know how long that's gonna be the ripple effect of people not wanting to live in Minneapolis anymore. But. That's a really good question and I apologize, I don't see it here. So we'll have to check into that. Um, we aren't seeing it impact other than the, like where the looting and burning has been, obviously it is, is being impacted and there's a lot of people that are afraid don't want to live there right now and that isn't an ideal time we need some civil settlement i'm not seeing the defunding of the police and all the political issues having a, an impact outside of people that actually are not wanting to move into the state 
So that's the only I've seen, I've heard from a couple of relocation clients that they're just going to pump the brakes a little bit, that they aren't sure what's happening in Minneapolis because to them it's happening everywhere. And I think for um, Twin City, people that are in the Twin Cities, it feels very specific to locations where there's danger or where there's unrest. And so they have, those areas are definitely down in activity, but like I'm listing a property that's over like in that Robbinsdale, North Minneapolis, Brooklyn Park area. Pro properties there are, are typically in, you know, a Minneapolis edge of a rougher neighborhood and are going like hotcakes and 20 or $30,000 over list price. Same thing with some of my South Minneapolis, my Northeast Minneapolis. So as long as they're not right where it was all happening, I'm not seeing that being impacted right now. Um, and I think it's really hard because so many of these things are unprecedented to just for me to really say what's going to happen in the future. Um, I, I have faith. I have faith in that good decisions will be made and that eventually the dust will settle and us as a community will get behind the decision and that our, <laughs> that we aren't going to all of a sudden not have a police department, right? And, and create even more chaos. So that's, that's my hope and goal is that as the real estate market has stayed strong through all the craziness right now that we continue to kind of putter through. And unfortunately those specific areas are being impacted. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Absolutely. Any other questions? It sounds like I'm maybe not getting the questions from other people. So if I didn't answer your question, it's because I don't see it here. Um, feel free to raise your hand and I'll unmute you and ask you to participate. Otherwise, it's been really fun to do this. Um, we're going to continue. Um, so I'll try to, we'll try to do a good job at articulating the topic so there's not any redundancy if you want to come back and learn more. We definitely will. The next one we do for sellers will be on that, move, like how to move and buy at the same time. So if you have questions about that or you want to have us out to give you a formal analysis of what your property's worth, feel free to let me know, put in the chat box or message me after this. Um, we do have your email addresses from registering. So I'll send you a quick thank you email. Feel free to reply to that. And we really enjoyed having you. And this was a lot of fun. I hope you got something out of it and learned something about our real estate market. So again, it's Christy with the Exceptional Home Team. Do me a huge honor and favor in doing any Google reviews or Facebook reviews. If you liked what you heard today, that's what helps me the most in, um, in my world of social media and how people make decisions these days on, on who to hire and who to partner with to help them through this process. So enjoy, have a great night, um, stay cool, and we'll talk to you soon.